All right, let's go ahead and get started. I want to sit down today and talk to everyone that cares to listen to this about the process of painting this recent painting I did of uh, what I'm calling like a Southern California beach town, mostly painted from imagination. Um, part of something that me and my friend are doing, just kind of an accountability program where we kind of owe each other an illustration every single week. And that's a it's been a pretty good way for me to kind of hold myself accountable by having something due rather than just doing personal work on my own account and then um, no one really expecting to see a final result. It's really easy to slip up on that. So this has been really fun, um, just kind of an experiment that me and my buddy are doing and uh, it's been really helpful. I would encourage you to maybe seek something like that out if you have someone in your life who's an artist also and you're both trying to self-practice and self-learn and do a lot of things it's really helpful to just team up and say well you owe an illustration every week and so do you and you just kind of bounce ideas off of each other and um it's pretty low pressure but it's a nice way to encourage yourself to keep doing work. Um, for this painting, I didn't record myself doing it because it was over the course of several days, I think about a week I spent on this painting on and off, you know, maybe a couple hours a day here and there. And I just never really had the wherewithal or forethought to click record, but actually thought of something that's probably even better than that. And it's just, I wrote down a bunch of notes about my thought process of what I was, what I could remember when I was making this painting and what I thought might be helpful to someone who wanted to do their own painting. Um, I would consider this something that I would put in my portfolio um, as a background painter. I think it shows my strengths in color and light. And um, yeah, so we're just going to go ahead and dive right into it. This is the final image, um, but let's turn all that off and we're going to get right to the very beginning of it. Um, I kind of have some talking points, so we're going to go ahead and start with... Uh, what my initial inspiration was. My initial inspiration was that I was just browsing the internet one day and I happened to cross this image of Gordon Ramsay's beach house. And this is the beach house that Gordon Ramsay has. And I was like, oh, that's a really cool house design. I don't know why, it just kind of struck me as something really, really cool. Um, right here. And, uh, you know, I liked the one-point perspective, I just kind of liked the stacked boxes there, and I love beaches, so that was kind of the catalyst for this whole image, was just this one image I happened to happened to cross on the internet one day, and um, I saw that, and I started making some sketches, and basically, this is the first sketch I made for this whole illustration. It's pretty much a one-to-one -one copy of the photo. Um, I kind of just drew directly from the photo, exaggerating some things and changing some certain elements to make them a little bit more um, energetic and more artistic or animation friendly, I would say. And um, in doing that, I realized it wasn't really what I wanted. And I also didn't want to paint an exact copy of that photo. I, I can do that all the time and there's value in that, but I kind of knew that I had to do this one illustration. So I wanted to make it a good one. And so I started building off of that. And these are four of the sketches that I made um, when I was starting to ideate this painting. Um, I did a bunch more sketches, but a lot of them just ended up on the cutting room floor, AKA I deleted them. And so they're not around anymore. Um, but these are the four that I kept and you can kind of see. So if I started with this one and then I'm just kind of like building off of that slowly, like um, this is the sketch, this is a little value comp uh, that I had. And then this is the next iteration of me just kind of trying to exaggerate some of those features. And then it ended up um, pretty quickly going into this type of image. And you could see a lot of where the inspiration is coming from. Um, so you got the same kind of like structure here, the same kind of like square beach house type dealio um, with these windows that I don't know, these just came from my imagination, these kind of windows here. And um, yeah, so I just ended up with this composition and um, it was not just this that solely inspired me. It was also um, this painting that I made. Um, I probably made this painting about two, three months ago up in Silver Lake, California. I was just driving around looking for something to paint and they have really steep streets there. So um, this was a fun painting to do. And um, the conjuncture of these two paintings kind of inspired me to do the final painting that we were talking about. And all the other reference that's here is stuff that I've gather, gathered after the fact once I actually started painting, but it is the reference I used when actually designing and drawing out the buildings in detail. But I did all that while I was painting, so we'll get into that in a minute. Um, but these were my two main sources of inspiration. 
um, a painting that I did and then a photo of some beach house and then I did some sketch exploration and then once I finally settled on this direction for the illustration um, I came to the next step which was lighting it or adding like a value comp as some people like to call it um, I was wanting to really focus on like dramatic lighting or like energetic lighting I would say even so I did a bunch of passes oh goodness golly gracious um, I did a bunch of passes for lighting on this and it was pretty tricky because I knew I wanted some cast shadows coming from the left or something, but I couldn't quite figure out what those cast shadows would be. I kept running into tangent situations. Um, this was my first one and I was like, oh, that would be cool, cool negative shape. And then this building was all in shadow and couldn't quite figure out what my focal point was um, with this one. So I moved on and I tried, well, maybe if it's getting hit directly from the left, that'll be kind of cool. but kind of left me wanting and so I said well maybe overcast and obviously that didn't work out um, and then I said well maybe just kind of a, a made up light source coming all the way from the diagonal um, and I said well that's cool but people will see through the lie pretty quickly um, so then I started experimenting with well if there's buildings there they would cast a light source that would have to make sense for the image and um, all of this um, you know this isn't stuff that was done in one day like it wasn't me sitting down and just kind of working out these problems in the matter of 10 minutes so I would say we ran through that pretty quickly in about two or three minutes but in reality I spent about like four or five hours just sketching and then walking away and then ruminating on it and thinking on it and that's a big part of my process when I'm doing these longer digital paintings is just kind of taking a eight hours or a day to t take a break from that painting and just kind of think about it in the back of my head um, and not too stressed about it but just have the um, I would try to have the 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 knowledge or the what's the word I'm looking for I would try to have the hope that the back of my head my subconscious uh, whatever you want to call it would try to try to solve a lot of these problems for me so that I, when I sat back down to do the painting um, I could come back in with a little bit more energy and a little bit more inspiration or whatever you want to call it. Um, so I ended up sell setting, settling on roughly this lighting comp, but got a little impatient. So I said, you know what, let me just go ahead and block in my major shapes and then we'll see where we go from there. Um, so once I did the lighting designs, uh, normally I would go and do a color comp. Um, but for this one, I, I didn't even do a color comp only because I knew exactly what I wanted with my colors. I didn't know what colors I wanted to put everywhere, but I did know that I wanted it to be warm and I wanted it to be high key and high key lighting. You could Google that, but high key lighting is basically where your darkest darks are really, really bright. So your whole image is relatively bright. So if we turn everything back on, turn that off. And then, then I turn my black and white layer on, um, you could see that, the darkest we get, I would say it's about right here. It's here, but um, it's pretty dark if you look where my cursor is. But we never go to black, and uh, we we never really go all the way to white either, although we do we get pretty close. So um, just, I was just trying to keep that in mind. Never wanted to go all the way to black, never wanted to go all the way to white, but I wanted to lean more towards the lighter side for this image. And I knew I wanted it to be really warm because I was thinking, oh, Southern California beach towns. And, you know, if we look at my, at my reference, um, they're all, they're all pretty bright. They're all pretty colorful. They're all pretty warm and they're all pretty high key, I would say. There's not a ton of super dark shadows. I mean, these are photos, so you're going to get dark shadows, but I can edit that because I'm not a camera, so I can kind of make up my own rules as I went along. Um, and then here's where things are going to get a little bit kind of tricky in this uh, video. It's We're going to click through the layers that I had, and I'll supply the PSD so you can click along with me. Um, but the way I made this was kind of... Um, kind of messy. I made a lot of layers and I, I, I tend to work pretty neatly as you can see I'm color coded and everything is relatively organized. Um, but I had my drawing and it's a tight drawing as in, you know, my major shapes are pretty well defined. You know, this building goes here and that goes there and like I know where things go and I kind of knew the perspective, which was all I bought. I didn't draw a perspective grid out for this because uh, it's pretty flat. The only perspective really is is these buildings here and I can pretty much just you know perspective you know it's right there so it's not super 
perspective intensive. I have another image I'm working on now that's pretty perspective intensive. And that one went through a lot of trial and error, so I'll try to make another video about that one later. Um, but um, you could see even with the sky color. So I started with this purple sky that I was like, oh, I just want the sky to be purple because I didn't want it to be blue because that's a little too average. So I said, we'll make it purple. And then as I kept going, I said, we'll make it uh, orange and then maybe green. And then I ended up setting, settling on this kind of cool green. Um, but basically, um, what I started doing is my first thing was I wanted to block out my main shape, um, which was this building. I would call it the star of the painting. Um, it doesn't necessarily have a focal point, this painting, but if there was one thing that was like the star, it was this building and the fact that the shadows fell across it um, in a diagonal way. So I definitely wanted that. And uh, I just kind of started blocking in the major bones of, of this building. And you can see I have tons of layers for all these shapes, and I kind of just make layers willy-nilly um, when I'm doing these types of paintings. Um, I keep them in groups so that they're relatively organized, and I can click whole chunks of space on and off at a, as I need, but um, once I'm inside the group, I tend to get a little unorganized. So I'm just using a lasso tool. If you've never used the lasso tool, it's right here. And you just go in and you draw your shape, or if you hold, if you're working on a Mac, you can hold Option, uh, option and then you get the uh, polygonal lax lasso tool and you can uh, create shapes like that and then I create those shapes and then you can carve it into them and then you just paint bucket and fill them and then let's say let's say this is the shape I'm working with just as a little demo oh my thing died Oop, pause the video something's, something's going on all right my pen died um, so like so this is my shape I don't know what happened, my Cintiq pen died, and I don't feel like stopping recording, because I do want to get this in one take. Um, and what I can do is I can take a new layer on top of that, and then hold Option in between these two layers, and then I could basically get this layer to parent onto that one, so anything I paint inside the top layer will only exist inside this shape. And so I utilized that a lot for this painting. And you can also just do it by like alpha locking it, which is this button here, and then you get the same effect. But I like creating a new layer and stacking it because then you have the option to turn things on and off. Um, and it gives you a little bit more editability. So I went in and I just started uh, kind of building things out. I got my, my rough sketch in there, but a lot of it is me designing on the fly and just trying to make things up as I go. And for my intent for this painting was, well, you know, I could I could draw this out ahead of time, and I've definitely done that before for more complex images, but this wasn't a super complex scene. It's just, you know, a flat view of a house and some perspective. So I figured I, 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 I could eyeball that on my own here. So just going in and just kind of drawing as I go and adding detail and trying to give this thing a little bit of personality um, and the plants, these plants that are right here that I'm clicking on and off, all of these were actually added in after the fact. So after I kind of had all of my bones in, so let's minimize that, let's get some bones in here. Um, I put my roads in second after that, um, and the roads kind of started just with, you know, basic shapes. Let's see, turn all this off. We're, we're doing it as we go, guys. Ain't, ain't, ain't nothing crazy here. Uh, hopefully you can learn something out of this. Um, I, I tend to find that when I watch time lapses of artists painting and them talking about the time lapse, that's helpful. But a lot of the times, just having an artist talk about the thought process of a painting is just as helpful. So I don't, I don't think the time lapse is necessarily needed. Um, but I would just go in here and uh, add the grass and the sidewalk and the middle line. Grass, sidewalk, middle line. We're going to turn those shadows off for now because um, that's not the order in which I painted them. Um, so yeah, grass shadow middle line, super simple stuff. And once I had the kind of like my main shapes here, so I went in and I made kind of what I would like to call a temporary shadow shape. And all this is is just kind of a light blue on multiply and opacity is probably down to 91%. And I went in and painted all my shadows and pretty roughly with the brush. Um, just to have the map there, just like my shadow map of where I wanted all my shadows to be. And then later, once I was done painting all of the local shapes and colors and getting all like the bones down, I went in and painted shadows into everything. 
Um, so at the very beginning, I'm mostly just painting as if it were an overcast day, just trying to get those local colors. And as far as color picking, you know, I knew I wanted it to be warm and I knew I wanted it to be high key. So I was trying to keep that in mind. And the also second thing to keep in mind is I knew my light would be over on the left side of the image coming on from off screen. So we'd get those cool cast shadows. I would say the time of day would probably be about 5 p.m. Um, and this is, all, this is all stuff I've thought about ahead of time. Just I have it, you know, in my head that 5 p.m., sun's down to the left. Uh, we're getting those cast shadows and... That kind of helps me to know what can happen because if I know the time of day and I know the weather conditions and I know all these these bits of information, um, I can make educated guesses about pretty much everything else. Um, so once I get this main building here and I got my roads in, I I started working on these I guess I'll call them condominiums here. Um, but for these condos, it was kind of funny because I didn't have much in the way of drawing. So here's the drawing of the condos. And they're really, really simple compared to what the final painting is. Um, and I knew, I was like, oh, these, this won't fly because that's too simplistic. There's no depth. Not Buildings aren't like that. So I went back to my reference. And this is where I started to, to deploy my reference a lot more heavily. And I would open these up on a second monitor and just have this here so I could be like, oh, you know, a lot of buildings in Southern California have this kind of veranda, or, you know, they have this kind of window detail, and, you know, they have these kind of roofs, and I would just steal little elements from all these buildings, not copying the entire building for one-to-one -one ratio, but I would just steal tiny little architectural elements, and then uh, with my lasso tool or my brush tool or whatever, whatever I needed, um, I would go in and start to draw those into here, and again, these plants came later. Um, very, very late in the game the plants came because I realized it was pretty boring. Um, but yeah, we're just going in here and we're, we're adding things. Does this pin work? Hey, it works again. Um, going in here, we're just adding architectural elements. And if you zoom in, they're, they're pretty loose. And I'm just kind of stacking layers on top of each other. I'm not doing too good of a job like integrating, like interlocking layers. I'm just kind of, you know, oh, there's a shape and and uh, that's a shape and you know that that goes there and then you know, this go there and so it's pretty messy like look at that that's not super clean or like refined but go in here and you kind of add enough detail to where it no one's gonna look super close at these little elements here they're just kind of look at the whole the whole the image as a whole is what I want to read as like fun and this you know I kind of take that cue from my the oil paintings that I do, because um, if we look, I'm just going to take this whole reference photo thing up here, because if we're going to keep referencing that, I don't want to keep going down to the bottom here, because if we look at my uh, ch -ch -ch my inspiration here, um, this is a small about a six by eight uh, painting in oil, and uh, there's things going on here, but everything is really really loose. Everything is kind of like splotched in with little um, swatches of paint, just to kind of give the uh, the idea of those objects and that's the same thing I want to bring into my digital work. I can go in and hyper render everything and make sure everything looks super accurate and real and 100%. Um, that's not what I really want to do though. Um, I wanted to get this out in a, in a timely enough manner so that I could do another one directly after it. And so we're just keeping on going with these buildings here. You know, just here I got my got my base for this building and then I'm just going in and adding the side of it and the roof of it and then I go and maybe add a little bit of color alteration some roof details add a little gazebo on the top second floor add a little um, I don't know what that would be called but just a little staircase up to a patio you know how rich people have stuff and then a mailbox because everyone gets mail um, and then after that I started to think about uh, the background and the background is fun too because the drawing I had, I'll open the drawing back up here in a second. The drawing I had was really, really simple for the background. And uh, basically I did the same thing with the background. I just had my reference up and I just kind of stole architectural elements as I went through and kind of quick and dirty added things in. I have my big silhouette and then I start to, I added that later, I have my big silhouette and then I start to subdivide that by adding uh, roof lines and you know, details on the foreground, and I'm keeping this background area really, really loose because it's far away, for one, and I'm keeping the values really, really 
clumped together so that there's not a lot of differences in values because um, that would be distracting. And then going in and adding just more things and more things and it gives the idea of a lot of detail. And then at the end of that I added this little glow layer. Um, it's just a texture brush, probably get it in the Kyle Webster brush pack. Um, or you could use whatever texture brush you want, or you could just use a soft around brush, and you just put that on there on the uh, color dodge. It's locked right now, so I have color dodge on there, and uh, it's just a kind of turn color dodge off, so and we could see what color that actually is. It's just kind of an almost black, really desaturated um, yellow here, but when you turn color dodge on that, it gives it kind of a very subtle glow. So let's see what else do we have. Uh, did that. And as I was painting this, I, I didn't choose the sky color immediately. Like this is, at this point, this is probably the sky color I was still working with. And then I would every now and again go back and say, ah, that sky color is boring and I'd change it. And then I'd say, ah, that sky color is predictable and change it and say, ah, that's, and what sky is green? And then I'd change it and say, a little bit lighter and then, oh, a little bit cooler. So a lot of it is, um, if I could give you the big takeaway, it's like trial and error and um, time. So. I would work on this for maybe an hour or two at a time, and then I would take a step back, you know, take eight hours, go to work, go home, go to sleep, go on a date, whatever. And then I would come back um, refreshed and kind of change the things that I had done before, alter them a little bit, and then add new elements. So, so nothing was ever like, from the beginning, I knew exactly what everything would be. A lot of it was just a learning process. I'll turn my value map back on, and then the reason I don't want to use multiply at the, like, just use multiply at the very end to just add the shadows, this is a great example. Um, because look how it does to these street lines. It just makes them a darker yellow because it's multiply and it just makes things darker. And a lot of the times that's fine. Um, but for things like a yellow, um, I wanted it to be different. So I would actually go in and just select that little area of street line and I painted those in their own color. So. Once I turn the shadows back on, let's see, let's turn the shadows back on, guys. Then that kind of green color makes more sense because my thought process was, well, if you got kind of a purpley bluey sky, cool sky, and it's blue shadows going down and you got yellow, um, it could be anything, but I thought it might be a nice nice choice to make it green, just because I tried a bunch of different options and none of them really seemed to work. So nothing nothing too mystical about it. You just gotta you gotta try some things, and if it doesn't work, try something else. And if that doesn't work, try something else. And then let's zoom back out here. And then the shadow on here is multiply, mostly just because I got lazy. Um, but some of them are painted directly on there, and some of it's multiply. You know, you, you you just do what you need to do for the painting. Um, a little bit of cleanup there. And then let's get into the foreground. Um, so the foreground, I knew I wanted all these plants. They're, they're in my drawing. We click the drawing on real quick. So the foreground plants are in my drawing, but they weren't to the level that they are in the final. I just kind of had a rough idea of them. And so I just kind of just kind of block in these trees, and then I'm just kind of using my lasso tool, and then locking the shapes and painting into them like we talked about um, to get to get some more detail in here. And then I would have this plant here, which is this one that I'm clicking on and off was mostly just me using the brush tool and painting in all these little leaves one by one. Um, I didn't use like a stamp tool and like make one stroke and I painted a thousand leaves. I just painted each leaf individually, and uh, had a little color dynamics on. If you don't ever use color dynamics, it's uh, right here, this little button, and you turn it on, and you can turn off apply per tip to get the effect I'm talking about. And let's say let's pick a uh, let's pick a cyan, and then turn hue jitter all the way up. Turn hue jitter, turn saturation jitter, so you get the same color but it's saturated, and then brightness changes the brightness of it. And then usually what I would do is I would turn these all to about um, below 10%, um, and then you just kind of get like a natural color variation in each shape, and that's a really fun way for me to do leaves because it's pretty quick. Um, takes a little bit of time to paint all those leaves in, but you know, move, time moves pretty quickly. So, and then on top of that, just to unify that um, color dynamics because it is a little ununified, I just go in there with an overlay 
and just uh, kind of a, a dark green with a texture brush on there. Um, and you know, I just got dark green because I painted a dark in there and I had overlay and then I would just kind of play around for which shapes and you, you use the best judgment that you have to see what colors you want. And then I'm going in and just paint in all these colors. You just get all these these things in here and um, they were pretty light. Um, I painted all these really light and then uh, I noticed there was kind of an issue with the value um, where they weren't standing out from the road. So I needed them to be darker, but obviously not too dark. So I just use my curves. Um, we can check what's going on in the curves here. And I just kind of uh, darkened, pulled that down a little bit. You can see what happens when I pull it down. Just pulled that down a little bit just to darken it. Not, not too, too much. And then um, at this point I was like, oh, something's kind of missing here. And I knew it needed plants. So I went in and I drew in a bunch of plants. Some of these plants were, I, I drew them in the foreground area. So you see them there, but they weren't always there. Um, and that's when I just went back into my layers and I said, all right, well, let's turn these plants on. And most of the plants um, were painted just with the brush, a hard round brush to give a little bit of accent from all that lasso tool type painting where it was really tight, crisp, clean edges. I wanted a little bit of variation with like some looser, more painterly type things. Um, so then we, then we got all that. Uh, nothing too crazy. I'm sure some of this stuff is off somewhere. Who knows? And then let's take a second. Let's turn, turn everything back on. On, on. A uh, lot of layers in here, guys. A lot of layers. It's a big file. It's like uh, it's like four gigabytes, and the file size it, that I'm working on is 16 inches by nine inches. So it is actually a pretty large file, and it makes my computer chug. But I made it large because uh, just in case I liked the results and I wanted to sell a print of it, uh, I could do that. And so once I had all this, turn that off. Once I had all this, like the image is done, and I could potentially call it done, but I always like to do some finishing touches on my digital paintings. I don't do these on my traditional ones because it's almost impossible. But digital, I like to go in and do a little bit of finishing touches. So it's nothing too crazy, but we'll, we'll walk through what those are one by one because this is probably the, the thing that, if you're watching this, you're excited about. Um, so the first thing I did was uh, just use a soft round brush and put a little color dodge in the corner. And the color of that color dodge is uh, just like, again, like a dark desaturated golden green and then put it down to 43 percent opacity i usually like to lower the opacity of color dodge um, just because it makes it a little bit more believable and then uh go in there and uh what is this oh yeah so we'll get to that and then i went in with these uh these are just some texture layers that are set to overlay so they're all locked let me unlock these all right so these are some texture layers so if we turn these normal, they're just like, r just a random texture brush I had. And I would go in here and turn them all to normal. And it's just like the same texture over and over and over again. And some things are masked out, like I didn't want these roof areas to get too much texture because it was kind of killing the color. So if I turn that off, you could see that kind of kills those pinks and reds a little bit. So I didn't want that, so I turned those off, uh, alpha those out, and I just, you know, lasso tooled them um, by hand. They're not perfect, but who cares, not me. Um, let's undo all that. Okay. So what these are set to is we just have our light texture layer. You saw what color it is, and then I would set it to overlay. This one is at 6%, and it's not a formula. I'm just kind of fiddling around. Um, have another one set to overlay at uh, or soft light to 18 percent to kind of counterbalance the overlay and then another one set to overlay and then another one set to color um, and this was basically the result of me duplicating that and then just clicking through all of these and changing the opacities and you know I'd spend 30 minutes or something just kind of playing around and then playing around with that and then on top of all that I have this here so what this is this is like a bright purple set to lighten. So you have that here and then it's just set to lighten at 44% and it doesn't really do that much like you can't even really see the difference. But what it does is it limits the darks that it can be so if you look at this tree right here I'll go ahead and circle it. So 
and it's kind of desaturating some of these really dark areas and just kind of not letting it get to that dark area. Um, so that's what that's good for. And uh, just play around with that. And then uh, the last thing I did was I went in with my smudge brush and I just got like a regular old smudge brush, comes preloaded in Photoshop, said uh, strength 20%, sample all layers, this is important so you're not editing something directly. And then I just go in and edit some stuff. That is a strong smudge brush. Goodness golly, took that to 3%. Um, oh, that's why. It was because it sample all layers, it samples all the adjustment layers too, so make sure those are off. And then I would just go in and uh, kind of just smudge, smudge areas that I didn't think needed that much visual importance. And this is the result. We can click those on and off a couple times. And yeah, it's just, just kind of almost random. Um, but I'm kind of keeping it to the outer limits of the image because I don't really want your eye to hang out there. And I kind of want you to move through like this. And uh, that's that's it, guys, uh, guys and girls and students and uh, uh, masters or whoever's watching this video. I don't really care. Um, so all in all, I would say I spent about nine hours on this painting um, for about a week on and off, a couple hours at a time, and just tinkering with it, just trying things and seeing if they worked. And if that didn't work, I'd try something else. And, you know, it's it's. It's, it's tough, it can be tough, and this was the result of a lot of paintings that were not great. Um, I spent um, last month doing just a lot of paintings that were like really loose and really fast and um, really brushy and from a lot of reference, just because I wanted to up my digital painting observation, so just kind of observing and recording and observing and recording and trying new techniques out and not necessarily like refining those techniques to the point where I would get finished illustrations, but making a lot of small paintings. So I did one a day, so 31 paintings, and none of those will be shown on my website or my portfolio. They're on Instagram, I think, but um, they're mostly just experiments to help me learn. And at the end of that month, I can take all of that information that I learned from those 31 days of experimentation and apply it to a more formal illustration like this. So that's the video. Hopefully you find it valuable or insightful, or maybe you're just bored at work and you need something to watch. But uh, thanks, thanks for checking this out. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can go download the PSD from Gumroad, or if you're watching this on Gumroad, then you probably already have it, and maybe you clicked along with me. Um, but yeah, have a have a great day, and if you liked this, let me know, please, and I'll make some more. And if you don't let me know, I'll assume you didn't like it, so I won't make any more. So uh, yeah, I, I love you. Um, I, I love you. I love you. I love you. I, is that weird to say in a video? I love you.